Well, congratulations on the film. And it's absolutely great to see the boys back, I've got to say. Um, the original, of course, was released in 2019. Was a sequel always on the cards, even before that was released? <laughs> we had the trilogy planned. Um, um, you said yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, we were trying to compete with Lord of the Rings. It was, uh, yeah. Um, well, I mean, obviously the first thing, you know, we made this, it was a, it was a, a low budget movie. Independent and, British movie. Yeah, yeah. and just yeah. kind of to get it into the cinema to compete against uh, Black Panther. Black Panther? No, that was Finding Your Feet. It was um, Captain Marvel. Mm-hmm. And that... No pressure happened. then. Yeah, <laughs> and I think that, that, that a lot of... Um, we have to say special thanks to our UK distributor, um, yeah. entertainment film distributors run by, you know, Nigel, Nigel Green, Green. Um, because he believed in the film and he a really... Huge th- champion of British independence. Yeah, cinema. and he threw all of his, you know, weight, experience and money behind trying to promote something that was going up against Hollywood. And it, it worked. We opened to number two. It... Uh, in the charts it stayed there and it really kind of um, connected with yeah, word of mouth was amazing we we found a you know a much wider audience than I thought we I think we ever imagined we could yeah. um, it just connected with people the message of community was something that really landed um, I think everyone was yearning for that sense of belonging that sense of identity um, you know family friendship tradition that, it, that, that were the themes of number one and also you know the little man sticking it to the big guy is always a you know, a very British trait that we all love to celebrate. So it I, mean, I remember it, it did very much sort of strike a chord at the time. Um, you wrote the screenplay for the first film. You've written the screenplay for this one as well. This time you're directing and it's your first time as, as directors. Had you always had ambitions in that sort of direction or was this just too good an opportunity to turn down? I think, um, you know, when we're working on the script, it's a very... I mean, we're imagining how it's going to be shot. We're imagining how it's going to be edited. You have to when you're putting it on the page. We're um, really yeah. bad actors, yeah, terrible, you know. So but... we've already <laughs> act, we've already acted in this film in our living room and kitchen yeah, and you know, in the street and we're, you know. We wouldn't wish that on anyone. So it's but, kind um, of like for every screenwriter yeah. out there, it's kind of like, well, you've kind of imagined it from yeah. a blank page. Yeah. You, you, you're, you, you know, for people who aren't um, kind of a fay with act, you know, with screenplays, as it were. Um, you know, when you look at a script, it's you're describing sound, you're describing vision, you're describing camera movement, you're describing, you know, characters, um, you know, themes, all, emotions, yeah. dialogue. There's so much going on yeah. that. You're on, choosing the in points and out points yeah. of each scene, you know, the sequencing, how they connect. You're thinking um, about what's the best cut, you know. So I think, you know, the, to, the jump to directing it, it didn't feel like a huge step because we'd already imagined it all. So um, it sounds like you approach yeah. it as just being one bigger job, really, rather than... It was, and I think we we, we yeah. were quite, you know, we've always been very active on the floor, on sets, with our other films, you know, so, you know, we've produced quite a few films, so we kind of know our way around on the floor, kind of interacting with the departments, you know, um, quite hands-on in post-production, so it just yeah. felt... Love the edit. Love the edit. <laughs> um, many people say that, but... <laughs> But it, uh, yeah. but yeah, so it yeah. just felt like a natural progression, and luckily yeah. we had the support again of Nigel Green and our producer James Spring. And we've built up a, um, you know, a trust, um, mutual trust with the cast, um, you know, battling through number one. Um, it was a challenging shoot, and uh, you know, we all came out as firm friends. So when it was proposed that we get the band back together, I think you know everybody was, everyone was raring to go. I was going to ask you about the the original cast because m- most of them are back, of course, and I wondered how much of a hand they had in the script and the story, particularly James Purefoy, because I gather he's an executive producer on this one as well, so he'd have yeah. been working very closely with you. Well, we, um, when we approached um, developing uh, the sequel, we decided that we'd like to see the story this time through the fisherman's eyes rather than through the record business, um, you know, from the side of the record business. Um, and James at the center of that, um, as our lead fisherman, we, we had a, you know, we, we, we approached him and proposed this deeper kind of elevated storyline for his character. So from the very beginning, we were in discussions with him about what we were, would like to see 
um, you know, his character go through. Yeah, and talking about and, uh, things that, you know, we needed that kind yeah. of um, close collaboration because we're yeah. talking, you know, he's, the journey he goes on is actually quite a serious one, although yeah. this, is a, this is a comedy. A feel-good, you know? uplifting comedy. His, has, his yeah. story, he is definitely the straight guy in this story. Yeah. You know, he is dealing with grief. He's dealing with the loss of his father and how to cope with that. He can't cope with how... Um, uh, you know, fame and fortune are changing, you know, potentially. Changing the world around yeah, him. Yeah, he's finding um, that very difficult to engage with. He's, yeah, he's he's depressed, you know, really. Yeah. And, so um, how did you approach balancing that serious side with the feel-good side of things? Because uh, it's a, a, you know, we have multiple protagonists around him. Uh, so yeah, well, every the, the, comedy, every yeah. every comedy yeah. needs you can't you just laugh all the time, yeah. you know, unless you're Billy Wilder, right? And even some of his great ones, there's there's great like moments, sad. of pathos and yeah. and real yeah. sadness. And I think yeah. that the films that we love or the comedies we love are the ones that also make us cry. So our yeah. references are very much like, well, you know, how can we? And that's how the film is structured. The structure definitely is kind of you know, you laugh, you think, you cry, repeat. Yeah. You know, and we move our way through that yeah. to um, so, to the denouement. Yeah. You know, which is obviously a really, you know, that was that's the big kind of hook of this movie, which is you know the ten fishermen overcome their problems both with you know uh, the record business, how to cope with fame and fortune with each other, with grief in the community, the yeah. community, how to deal with uh, falling in love again, and and you know trusting again, trusting yeah. again to ending up performing on the pyramid stage at Glastonbury supporting Beyonce. Which really happened. And uh, in 2011, we were there and uh, there's a scene in the movie where they write a note and stick it on Beyonce's enormous Winnebago, <laughs> which says, uh, dear Beyonce, uh, you can share our dressing room, but just don't go nicking any of our songs <laughs> or Isaac's Fisherman's Friends. And, uh, you know, that, that's, that's taken from the real life events of uh, them going to Glastonbury. So, so how important important to you was it that the film was released in cinemas rather than going to a streaming service everything yeah it's everything to yeah. us because I think that you know we've we've made quite a few films now over the last 10 years and everyone's had a cinematic release and we're really proud of that because they're 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 purely British independent films that have always found their way to the multiplex and that's very hard to do um, because we write audience facing films yeah. And this is a film that, you know, it, 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 it is about cinema, musically, cinematically, you know, emotionally, the, emotionally yeah. the, the cinematography, the kind of, you know, Cornwall was one of the, I think one of the prettiest places on the planet. It's completely unique. And we tried to do justice um, with that, with our wonderfully talented cinematographer. Um, and it, it feels like you're going on holiday when you yeah. sit in that cinema and you you wouldn't get that with the small screen you know and it's and we want people to see it on the yeah. small screen but we ultimately we want it to start its journey where it should start and, which is in cinema surrounded yeah. by people and hearing other people laugh and musically you know shanties are songs that are sung in groups together it's a call it's a call and response yeah. song you know in a that cinema thing is really yeah. that music that unifies yeah. people you know being in a cinema, singing along to those songs. You know, we, we experienced that last Thursday at the premiere. It's such a fantastic feel good experience, you know, and, and also, to all being sung together. And yeah. also we're just coming out, you know, of, of this pandemic, you know, we have all collectively experienced something that we all have something in common with each other, which is we all were exposed to real isolation, yeah. right? We stopped doing the things that we loved, we lived in our living rooms, you know, we watched TV, we consumed as many movies as we could. But what I think most people realised is how much we need each other and how important it is to be around other people. Yes, we can choose to dip in and dip out and we all need our solitude from time to time. But it's really important that, you know, you, you, you're around your, you know, fellow people. So balancing the serious with the, the less serious, um... How sexy are fish fingers? 
Depends, Very. Depends <laughs> what big fingers they are. <laughs> depends what kind of sandwich you're having it in. And whether it has ketchup on it or not. Exactly. <laughs> or you go, yeah. And it's a whole load of metaphors there. Exactly. <laughs> Let's not go there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're bringing, bringing back the fish finger sandwich. Although, yeah. talking, so talking of yeah. fish fingers, so in Port Isaac, where we shot the film, where the fisherman's friends are from, and a huge character in this film, the... Um, the village. The village. Yeah. Um, uh, Billy, who is one of the... Um, For founding members founding of the Founding members band. of the band. He owns the pottery, which um, sells beautiful kind of ceramics, paintings, crafts. and it's crafts, yeah. but it's also got a brilliant cafe and they have the world championship fish finger um baguette and a lot were consumed not gonna be done a lot were consumed yeah. on set Get and away. a lot of calories had to be burned in post-production because <laughs> they were very good excellent guys it's been great to talk to you thank you so much for your time it's been lovely. thank you real pleasure thank you, Frida.